So this video is going to be on determining binomial coefficients. We're basically going to look at a few things. Uh, it should be pretty quick. So before we talk about determining the binomial coefficients, we need to talk about what a binomial is and what binomial expansion is. So any expression uh, where we've got two terms being added or subtracted is called a binomial, right? A plus B. Doesn't matter what the A and the B are. Uh, but when we square it, when we get A plus B squared, remember this was a specific formula. That means we're going to FOIL them. So we're looking at doing something like A times A is A squared. We've got an AB and an AB gives us 2AB and then a B squared. This is the binomial expansion. So this was to the second power. So that's pretty easy and pretty straightforward in what we've done before. But we can do this to any power and we'll start to note a certain pattern, okay? So if we look at this, if we do the expansion to the zero power, anything to the zero power is just one. Well, anything to the first power is just itself. So when we square something, when we fold it out, we wind up with this a squared plus 2ab plus 1, b squared. So if we're looking at the coefficients, right, notice that the first coefficient is always 1. The last is always 1. So this is one pattern that we notice straight away. There is another pattern, which you can't quite see as well uh, the way it's written here. But if we change the way we're uh, looking at things, maybe uh, we'll see a different pattern start to emerge. So we are going to notice a couple of other things. Notice that the exponent of a decreases from whatever the exponent is down to zero as we go from left to right. So here we've got to the first power, right? So we started with one and we went down to a to the zero. Here we started with a to the two, a to the one, a to the zero, a to the third, a to the second, a to the first, a to the zero, right? So notice that they start with the same exponent and go down with a. Now, what about b? Notice that b starts with zero. b to the zero, b to the first, b to the zero, b to the first, b to the second, b to the zero, b to the first, b to the second, b to the third. So we're increasing our b's from zero to whatever that exponent is as we go from left to right. Now notice also that the sum of the exponents, if we add our exponents, 2 plus 1, 3, 2 plus 2, 4, 4 plus 1, 5, 2 and 3, 3 and 2, they're always going to add up to be 5 for, for a fifth power. They're always going to add up to be 4 for a fourth power. So we notice that. And we're also going to notice that the number of terms in the expansion is always one more than the exponent. Okay, So if the exponent is 0, that means there's one term. Exponent is 1, there are two terms. Exponent is 5, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. Okay, So that's important to recognize. Now, one thing we're going to talk about with our coefficients is that there's also a pattern there. You might not have noticed it, but it follows a triangular array of numbers that are called Pascal's triangle. Now, each row begins and ends with a 1, and each entry uh, in between is the sum of the two diagonal entries from the row above it. That may not make a lot of sense, but let me show you the picture. We start with 1s. We end with 1s. So this is the triangle part. And every term is going to be added the two terms diagonally above it. So... If I don't know what this is, it's 1 plus 2 equals 3. 2 plus 1 equals 3. 1 plus 3 equals 4. 3 plus 3 equals 6. 3 plus 1 equals 4. You see, and we can draw this triangle out as far as we want to if we just follow this pattern. So can we use all of this information that we've just done to expand something? 100%. If we're talking about to the seventh power, that means we need eight rows of Pascal's triangle. Notice here. This is for the zero power. This is for the first power. This is for the second power, third power, fourth power, fifth power. I didn't even, I didn't even show you the similarities here, right? This is the coefficients. 1, 1, 1. 1, 2, 1. 1, 3, 3, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Notice how the coefficients here are just that entry in Pascal's triangle. But remember, you've got a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 4. Right, so the first row is the 0th row, 
and then everyone after that. So if you're looking for uh, the binomial expansion of seven, then we need technically eight rows, right? One, three, three, one. One, four, six, four, one. One, five, ten, ten, five, one. So this was what was already up there. So how do we get the rest of it? Well, we know it's going to be one. One plus five is six. Five plus ten is fifteen. Ten and ten is twenty. Ten and five is fifteen. Five and one is six and one. We need one more row. So one, seven, twenty-one, thirty-five, thirty-five, twenty-one, seven, and one. Now notice that they're symmetrical. One, seven, twenty-one, thirty-five, thirty-five, twenty-one, seven, one. They're going to go up and down. It's going to be the exact same thing. So we know our co coefficients are going to be one. 7, 21, 35, 35. Well, let's, give some, let's give ourselves a little more room. 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, and 1. Now, remember, we start with our A. We start with that power and start going down. A to the 7th, A to the 6th, A to the 5th, A to the 4th. A to the third, A squared, A to the first, and then A to no. Okay. B, we start with none and rise to one or to uh, seven. So B to the zero, B to the one, B to the two, B to the three, B to the four, B to the five, B to the six, and B to the seven. And this is all addition. Everything is positive. So we put the plus signs. And there is the binomial expansion of a plus b to the seventh power. What will we use? We use Pascal's triangle. They gave us the coefficients. We know that a starts with exponent and goes down. b starts with zero and goes up. Okay. So, but what if we have, say, an expansion that's much bigger than that? I can all I can draw Pascal's triangle to whatever I want to. However, sometimes it's easier to use something else. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the binomial expansion coefficient known as n above r or n choose r. Okay, so if we assume that n is some uh, non-negative integer, r is some non-negative integer, and in this case, n will always have to be at least greater than or equal to r. n will never be less than r. And we read n choose r, and it's called the binomial coefficient. It's defined by n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. Now, in this case, it's important to recognize that factorial means multiplied by every uh, natural number less than itself. For example, 5 factorial would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay. You're just going to take that number and multiply it times every natural number that's less than it is. So we're going to take the top number, the bottom number, the factorial of n, the factorial of r, and then I'm going to subtract them and put the factorial. This notation uh, in uh, CR um, is often used instead of using the n above r, but and you may see that this button is actually on your calculator. And if it is, it makes your life a little bit easier. So how do we actually solve these things? Well, 4 above 2, or 4 choose 2. So 4 choose, well, that's right, a little 4. 4 choose 2. So this is going to be 4 factorial over 2 factorial, and then subtract 4 minus 2 factorial. So that's 4 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. So if you write this out, this is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This is 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. So the 2 cancels the 2. 2 will go into 4 twice. And you wind up with 2 times 3 times 1, which is 6. Notice, the way factorials work, 
they will always cancel out. You will never have anything other than a whole number pop out, okay? Or a, a, a natural number, I should say. So six is our four, two, four choose two. So 10 choose seven will be 10 factorial over seven factorial times 10 minus seven factorial. Now I'm gonna show you something. When these numbers are like this and fairly close together particularly, I know that 10 factorial can be written as 10 times nine times eight times seven factorial. Remember, that just means times everything underneath it. But I have seven factorial times three factorial here. So notice the seven factorials will cancel out because that's just seven times six times five times four. Uh, they'll all just cancel out. So I want it with 10 times nine times eight over three times two times one. So two goes into eight four times, three goes into nine three times, 10 times three times four, three times four is 12 times 10 is 120. Now, 10 above R or 10 choose R, 10 above three or 10 choose three, 10 factorial over uh, three factorial and then 10 minus three factorial. So we wind up with 10 factorial over three factorial, seven factorial. Notice this is exactly the same thing. 10 times nine times eight times seven factorial over seven factorial times three factorial. 10 times nine times eight over three times two times one. Uh, three, two, four, I still get 120. So the numbers that add up to be 10 in this case should have the same, remember it's symmetric. So those values should wind up being the same. Now, what does this mean in terms of five above zero or five choose zero and five choose five? Well, this is gonna be five factorial over zero factorial times five minus zero factorial. Well, that's just five factorial. This is important for me to show you because I have a defined zero factorial. So we need to make a note, zero factorial equals one, okay? If you wanna know why, ask me in class or shoot me a mind, come see me, I don't wanna go into it right now, but uh, suffice to say that zero factorial is equal to one. Now, if that's the case, then that's just five factorial times five factorial. They cancel out and you've just got one. What about five above five? So that gives us five factorial five factorial, five minus five factorial. But five minus five is zero and zero factorial is just one. Still have one. So the rule is anything choose zero equals one. Anything choose itself equals one. So if you have any questions about binomial expansion or the binomial coefficients, just shoot me a reminder or an email.